Hi, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. Is this thing gone? I said shots to Nick and Dawn. Him on the air radio every Sunday night, man. What up? Red Dragons. Shout out to the boy, Nick. I see you done. You about to witness the real talk, real talk. Put it in your air. We reach it for the sky, but we put it in the air. Not a glass jar, but I tell it to you clear. Am I on the air? We rock. Here's your whip, man. Am I on the air? Here's this mic here for nothing. My demographic pull do box office numbers. Weekend reviews said we number one get us. Now y'all on here, we're number one get us. Uh, turn it on, Nick and Dawn. And I'm like, turn it up, what the f***, eh? We air it out, wear it out, and we winning Him on the air, follow back, and we trending You can't tell me what I bet not be Don't give a FCK about the FCC I'm the head for the hellas, voice for the voices Him on the air, Sunday night, and I'm off this down everybody welcome back to another edition of am i on the air i'm your host don mega and welcome to the show tonight it's season eight episode 15 our show title is let them fight let them fight Uh, welcome to the show everybody um we're back on our sunday night so i'm trying to get back into the normal groove here it is may 18th 2014 and um you know, the last two weeks, we've done the show on a Tuesday, so the weeks have been kind of skewed, and I want to make sure everybody's been able, able to go back and find the last couple episodes, you know, if you, I, I heard know a couple people checked on Sunday, didn't see anything new, and might have just not checked back. So yes, there was episodes the last two weeks, they were just done on a Tuesday instead, so, uh, if you haven't heard last week's show, it was called Won't You Be My Neighbor. Great episode. Um, we talked about um, Ben Affleck in the Batman suit. We talked about um, Neighbors. That was our big review last week. We talked about the TV upfront schedule, what's been renewed, what's been canceled. It was a really, really solid episode. So um, it's less than a week old, and you might have missed it. So go back and check out the last episode, Won't You Be My Neighbor. But we're going to keep things rolling. I want to get back on track with our Sunday schedule, so that's where we're at here tonight, um, and tonight's review is gonna be Godzilla, yes, saw Godzilla, and, um, you know, big movie of the weekend, and, um, it's setting records. It it on Friday alone, the movie did thirty eight million dollars, um, which was the biggest one day take of any movie this year. So congratulations to them for that. Um, overall, the movie did ninety three million dollars at the box office. So of course, it's the number one movie in America. Um, a, a whopping ninety three million dollars because on Friday they were expecting Godzilla to hit around the 65 maybe 70 million dollar mark that's it 65 to 70 which they were happy with and they were thinking that was a good start and then it did 93 so it smashed all expectations it actually beat the opening of Spider-Man 2 um which is awesome um you know because it was better than Spider-Man 2 in my opinion um but fell just a little bit shy of the $96 million that Captain America the Winter Soldier took in on its opening weekend. So Captain America 2 still the biggest opening weekend, probably until this upcoming weekend when X-Men Days of Future Past comes out. Uh, heavy expectations for that movie, thinking it's going to debut with over $100 million. So we will see. But let's talk about Godzilla. Now this, of course, is the brand new reboot take on it, uh, trying to get everybody to erase the 1998 version out of their heads that um, Roland Emmerich did with Matthew Broderick. Um, This time, 
we get Kick-Ass, Aaron Taylor Johnson, we get Ken Watanabe, we get Brian Cranston, we get the lovely Elizabeth Olsen. Um, those are your, that's your main core cast. Uh, the movie starts out um, from an origin story, kind of taking you back, and you see kind of, um, you hear about, you know, what's gone on. And um, you see Brian Cranston, he's living in Japan, and um, there's a there's a breakdown at the factory that he works at and um the movie kind of fast forwards about 15 years and brian cranston's son played by aaron taylor johnson is now grown up he's a military guy he's married to elizabeth olsen um he just gets home from serving a tour of duty he finds out his dad's been arrested in japan so he goes back to rescue his dad and then of course all hell breaks loose <laughs> at this point. Um, the cool thing about this movie is that if you were thinking this is just about Godzilla, um, there's more to it. There's um, these other creatures in the film as well, and that really was needed um, because you know I'm going to warn everybody. You know I want to stay away from spoilers because that's what we always do here. I don't want to give anything away, um, but I want to set the tone for if you haven't seen it, what you're going to be walking into. Um, you get glimpses of Godzilla throughout the movie, which actually you don't get a first glimpse of him until about an hour into the movie. Then you get random glimpses, and you don't f- get full-on Godzilla to probably the last 20, 25 minutes of the film. So, that was a little bit of a bummer for me. Um, not gonna lie. It's, you know, it's a Godzilla movie, I want to see Godzilla. I want to see Godzilla fucking shit up. And um, I did not get that until an hour and a half into the film. And for a two-hour movie, it's just too long. You know, and I know they tried to make a little bit of filler with the other creatures, um, but it's just not the same. You want to see Godzilla. And um, so my beefs with the film was for a two-hour movie, I felt like it was too long. I think if they would have cut out a half hour of it, they could have tightened it up a lot, and it would have been a way better pace. Um, it focused too much on the human story, and one of the big, you know, I love the Transformers films, one of the biggest complaints people have about the Transformers films is the focus on the humans too much, and that's exactly what Godzilla did, so I'm hearing people make the same comparison here. Um, now, if you would have cut the film down a half hour, and didn't, and that wouldn't have made you wait an hour to get into Godzilla, I think this movie would have been outstanding. Um, so, for me, that last half hour when Godzilla is out and about, and all hell's breaking loose, that was my favorite part of the film. Up until the last 25 minutes of the movie, I would have probably given this film three stars. Um, I liked it, but I wasn't really floored by it. I had pretty high expectations for it, and I didn't feel like it really lived up to that. Um... But that last 25 minutes really knocks it out the park. So that was so good, and I was so impressed by the ending of the film that I ended up rounding up and giving the movie really a big benefit of the doubt. Kind of, I felt exactly the same way with Pacific Rim. If you heard my Pacific Rim um, review, it was exactly the same thing. The movie was like a three-star, maybe, (laughs) for Pacific Rim, um, but all the fight scenes in Pacific Rim really bumped it up, and I gave Pacific Rim four stars. So... Kind of the same thing here with Godzilla. It was more of a three-star movie, three-and-a-half-star movie, um, but that ending was so good, and the battle scenes with um, the other creatures and Godzilla and stuff was outstanding. They just did such an amazing job with the graphics and with everything that I just could not give it four stars after the ending to the film. So I did end up giving it four out of five, but it's a loose four out of five. Um, like I said, it's really due to the ending of the film. I was I was pretty bored in several parts of the movie before the big you know climatic battle. So fair warning to you. Um, I, I feel like that was a little bit of the beef with some of the other people uh, that have watched this movie. Uh, I actually saw it with a really good group. I saw my brother-in-laws I usually do movies with. I saw it with Geeky Pat, um, who, you know, I let you guys know last week, Geeky Pat does a show called This Week with the Geek, which is on Red Dragons Radio, where we're on. And um, so got to do a movie-going experience there with Geeky Pat himself. (laughs) And uh, also my buddy Sean. Um, Sean will actually be coming on on this show uh, in August. He's going to join me uh, to do a review on Guardians of the Galaxy. So, um... 
you know, some guys that I talk movies with all, on, a, on a very often basis. And um, I felt like when we walked out of the film, we all kind of shared a lot of the same sentiment. Um, so, good movie. A little bit of a letdown based on expectations. Um, but really, the last 20, 25 minutes really bring it back home for you. So... Um, I can't complain too much. I did, we did see it in IMAX 3D, which was pretty badass for a film like this, so I think that definitely helped uh, also. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Godzilla, um, th- uh, 4 out of 5 stars on the scale. And you can check out all the reviews uh, that we do over on amiontheair.com. Just click on the Movie Reviews tab, and you can see everything we've discussed. Next week, of course... X-Men, Days of Future Past, super stoked. It was my number two most anticipated movie of the year. Um, Very close to being the number one most anticipated movie of the year. Uh, I'm looking so, so forward to this. If if that movie does not get five stars, I'm going to be very disappointed. So, super high hopes for X-Men, Days of Future Past. All right. There's your movie review of the week. That is out the way. And now we're going to crush through the news stories of the week. You know, since I did a show on Tuesday... I don't know, there's not a ginormous amount of stuff to get through, so we'll roll through. Um, I'm going to actually start off with the Billboard Music Awards. Uh, this award show just ended, actually. I just finished watching it. It was live tonight on Sunday night. Um, and um, it was actually a pretty decent little award show. It was uh, hosted by Ludacris. It was aired on ABC over at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I was married at the MGM Grand, so the MGM holds a very special place in my heart. And uh, I'm just really quickly... I'm going to run down your list of winners at the Billboard Awards. Top artist went to Justin Timberlake. Top new artist went to Lord. Top male artist went to Justin Timberlake. Top female artist went to Katy Perry. Top duo group went to Imagine Dragons. Top Billboard 200 artist went to Justin Timberlake. Top 100 artist, Imagine Dragons. Top digital songs artist, Katy Perry. Top radio songs artist, Justin Timberlake. I'm seeing a trend here. Top touring artist went to Bon Jovi. Top social artist went to Justin Bieber. Top streaming artist went to Miley Cyrus. Top R&B artist, Justin Timberlake. Top rap artist, Eminem. Top country artist, Luke Bryan. Top rock artist, Imagine Dragons. Top Latin artist, Mark Anthony. Top dance slash electronic artist, Daft Punk. And top Christian artist, Chris Tomlin. Um, For the album awards, the top album went to Justin Timberlake 2020 Experience. Also winning um, top R&B album as well. Uh, Top rap album went to Eminem for the Marshall Mathers LP. Top country album went to Luke Bryan for Crash My Party. Top rock albums went to Imagine Dragons for Night Visions. Top Latin album was Mark Anthony with 3.0. Top dance slash electronic album was Daft Punk, Random Access Memories. Top Christian album was Alan Jackson with Precious Memories, Volume 2. Uh, on the song awards, the top 100 song was Robin Thicke with Blurred Lines. That also won Best Digital Song, Top Radio Song, Top R&B Song. <laughs> um, top streaming song went to Imagine Dragons at Radioactive. Top streaming song with a video went to Miley Cyrus with Wrecking Ball. Oh, that one, you know, nothing about her being naked swinging on a wrecking ball probably helped that, but, you know. (laughs) Top country song went to Florida Georgia Line, featuring Nelly with Cruz. Top rap song was Macklemore and Ryan Lewis with Can't Hold Us. Top rock song was Lord Royals. It really pisses me off that they call that a rock song. That is not a rock song. Okay, moving on. Top Latin song was Mark Anthony with Viva Mi Vida. And top dance slash electronic song was Avicii with Wake Me Up. And top Christian song went to Matthew West with Hello, My Name Is. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Your Billboard Music Awards um, just finished going down uh, live tonight. And let's get into the news. Um, so I got an update. On last week's show, I told you we um, we discussed all the upfronts, um, shows that were renewed, shows that were picked up, shows that were canceled, the whole nine. And on the episode, I discussed that on uh, CBS that they had picked up the spinoff show, How I Met Your Dad, which of course was the How I Met Your Mother spinoff show. Come to find out Monday morning, or Wednesday morning after I did the show on Tuesday, um, the CBS chief of television came out and said that the network ended up having to pass on the pilot and that they are not going to be airing How I Met Your Dad. So I'm a little bummed by that. I'm a big fan of How I Met Your Mother and I was looking forward to How I Met Your Dad. And um, 
I guess they wanted to reshoot the pilot, and there just wasn't enough time to get it done, so they ended up having to pass on it. It, it seems like there's some fillers out to other networks to see if they'd be wanting to take it over, um, but nothing as of yet. So a little bit of a bummer there uh, for CBS having to pass on How I Met Your Dad. Uh, Conan O'Brien has re-upped his contract with TBS. He'll be staying with the network through 2018. So congratulations to Conan, man. Big extension there for him. Uh, also in TV news, uh, yes, Two and a Half Men is coming back next season, but then it was announced last week that uh, this next season, which is season 12, will be the final season. Show is coming to an end. Um, no shocker here. I'm a, actually a big fan of how, of uh, Two and a Half Men, and the season 10, which was the first one that Ashton Kutcher, I did not like really at all. I hated Ocean, uh, Ashton's character. He came off just stupid and just not funny at all. Uh, they tweaked him a bit for the season 11, and I actually really like season 11 a lot. That's the season that just ended. Um, I liked most of the episodes they aired this season, so I was pretty happy to see season 12 that they were going to come back again, um, but not shocked to hear that this is the last season. I mean, there's only so much more you can do with a show like this. It really has ran its course. Um, my hope now is that they bring Charlie Sheen back somehow. Um, you know, on the show, they acted like he died, um, so... Some people might say it's a stretch, but the way Charlie Sheen's character was on the show, I would not put it past him that he, um, you know, faked his death or something to avoid like a, a girl or something like that. So uh, I would not put it back past them. So I'm hoping, my fingers are crossed, that that's what they end up doing. But um, season 12 of Two and a Half Men will be its final season. Uh, Katie, Se- Katie Seagull, um, she's joined Pitch Perfect 2. Of course, you know her. She's on Sons of Anarchy right now. Um, but I mainly, mostly know her from Married to Children. She was Al Bundy's wife. Uh, really good actress, so very cool to see her join, join Pitch Perfect 2. Uh, on last week's show, we told you Gerard Butler had to drop out of the Point Break reboot. Well, they have replaced him. Edgar Ramirez is going to be replacing Gerard Butler in the Point Break reboot. Um... Edgar's okay, he's no Gerard Butler, so I've lost a little bit of interest in Point Break now without Gerard, but we'll see what he does. Also on last week's show, we talked about American Idol coming back. They're now in negotiations with all the judges to see who they can get back, and the first one on board is Harry Connick Jr. Harry Connick Jr. has agreed to return, and he'll be on the next season of American Idol. Um, Broken Lizards, Jay, and I'm going to butcher his last name, I'm sorry, Jay Chandraskara <laughs> is going to direct the Blue Mountain State movie. I never watched the TV show, so I don't know much about it, but hey, if you watch the TV show, there's a movie coming, and Broken Lizards, Jay, is going to direct it. Um, Anthony Mackie has joined a new Christmas comedy movie that Seth Rogen and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are doing. I love Anthony Mackie. He was so good as the Falcon in Captain America the Winter Soldier. He was awesome in Pain and Gain. This dude's blowing up right now. And hearing him in a comedy with Seth Rogen and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, sold. Um, the Harry Potter spinoff, um, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them, is going to hit theaters on November of 2016. So, I know some people that'll be super excited about that. I am not one of them. Um, are everything wrong with we got a couple X-Men's this week first up is everything wrong with X-Men Origins Wolverine in 14 minutes or less uh, they nitpicked the hell out of this one as expected um, have the second official trailer for Deliver Us from Evil the new Eric Bana movie uh, horror film we have the first teaser trailer for the live action Cinderella movie not much of a teaser. It really just focuses on the glass sh- glass slipper and um, has some kind of just audio overdubbed over it. It's a pretty whack teaser. But the big trailer that debuted since our last episode that I'm super giddy about is the second official trailer for Transformers Age of Extinction. This trailer is amazing. It is so, so good. Check it out on our page. Check it out on the Facebook. Check it out on the Twitter. If you haven't seen it, you need to see the brand new Age of Extinction trailer. It's so good. We get to hear from Optimus Prime. We get to see him transform into his new truck. Um, 
we get to see him riding Grimlock. Um, Grimlock spitting fire. He's got his sword out. It's just so sick, and that's why it's my number one most anticipated movie of the year. This trailer proved to me why I have so much faith in this franchise. So uh, it's awesome, and if you haven't seen it, go run and see it right now. Um, Brad Pitt is reportedly set for season two of True Detective. This is very, very interesting. Um, we had heard that, you know, True Detective, which just ended a couple months ago, um, had Woody Harrelson, had Matthew McConaughey, that they were going to do like a rotation thing. And every season, it would bring in two big stars and, and have a whole new story to tell. And um, we've been waiting to hear who they were going to do for season two. And now they're saying all signs point to that's going to be Brad Pitt. So I'm a little shocked by this. I didn't really think that Brad Pitt would come do a TV show. Um, but supposedly he's pretty locked in. So this is not official as of yet, but that is the um, that is the word going around right now is that he's pretty much a lock for season two of True Detective. And if he is, that's a pretty good signing. Uh, Zach Galifianakis has joined Christoph Waltz in a new movie called Tulip Fever. Um, Catherine Bigelow is going to direct a new movie starring Tom Hardy uh, called True American. Um, Definitely read the synopsis on this one. It sounds like a very, very interesting film. Uh, In more TV news, FX and FXX has canceled Legit and Chosen. Uh, I'm a little bummed by this one. I didn't watch Legit, but I did watch Chosen, and I like Chosen. It was a pretty funny little cartoon show. Um, So I'm a little bummed. I thought for sure that they would bring it back for another season, but... Guess not, so I'll have to live with it, but sad to see him go. Legit and Chosen, gone from FX and FXX. Um, John Barrowman, um, who is on Arrow, his role has been upgraded to a series regular for season three. So um, he plays Merlin on Arrow, if you watch Arrow. And he's awesome, but he wasn't really on the second season very much. Um, But he's going to have a big, big role in Season 3, so he's been upgraded to a series regular. Um, A lot of people are super stoked at this news. There's an offer out to Harrison Ford to come back and return for Blade Runner 2. Yep, it's finally coming. They're working on the script. Um, The director is locked in, and now they are just putting out the feeler to Harrison Ford to see if he'd be interested in coming back. So, I know a lot of people are super stoked about this. This is a movie that's been a long, long time coming. And, um, you know, I feel like I need to go back and watch Blade Runner. um, Because it's been so long since I've seen it. But this movie is so highly regarded by so many people as one of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time. Um, Ridley Scott, who directed the original back in 1982, uh, is attached to come back and direct the sequel. So no worries there. They've got to get Harrison. But from all the early word that I've heard, um, you, you know, way, if you even go back like a year, Harrison seemed to be pretty open on coming back to Blade Runner. So this seems like it's probably a pretty done deal, but they're just going through the motions right now. Uh, so Harrison Ford, man, you know, doing Star Wars right now. I think he's going to get another Indiana Jones. Now he's going to get Blade Runner. I mean, he's got a big resurgence going on right now. Um, Seth MacFarlane is going to be releasing a Christmas album this December. So keep an eye out for that. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, we also posted the first trailer uh, for The Flash, the brand new CW show. They released a nice little five minute trailer, and um, you see that uh, Arrow himself makes a cameo in the pilot. Uh, it looks really, really good, so I'm super stoked on it. I love Arrow, and I love that The Flash is going to be set in that same universe, so I think the CW is doing a really good job, and I was pretty, really, really damn impressed with the trailer for that. Uh, Foo Fighters is teaming up with HBO to do a documentary series. Um, that'll be interesting. I think it's going to just follow them making their new album. Uh, there's going to be a Drumline sequel. Yep, and I know most people are probably going to even say, what the hell's Drumline? But Drumline was a movie that Nick Cannon did. Um, they are doing a sequel. I don't think Nick Cannon's involved, but it's actually going to air on VH1. So VH1 is doing a Drumline sequel, 
And uh, yeah, not much more to that. CW uh, tried to develop um, a Supernatural spinoff for this current season, and it didn't work out, and they scrapped it. Um, But then word came out back on the 15th that the CW is now developing a brand new Supernatural spinoff. They say they got a lot of ideas, and they want to do a spinoff for Supernatural, so they are working on something else again. Um, we posted uh, an article that has some the first poster and some still pictures of uh, the new Hunger Games from Hunger, Jam- uh, Hunger Games uh, Mockingjay. Yeah, Mockingjay Part 1. Um, Hunger Games 3, for some of you. <laughs> you get your first glimpse of um, Julianne Moore as President Snow. So that's very interesting. And you get to see Philip Seymour Hoffman in there, the uh, late and great. All right. Um... We got the first official trailer for Interstellar. That is the new Christopher Nolan film starring Matthew McConaughey. Uh, There was only a teaser out before, but now we have the first full official trailer. I saw this in IMAX before Godzilla, and it looks interesting. It looks good, but I wasn't blown away by it. Some people are, like, losing their mind over this trailer. And, I mean, I'm interested because it looks so unique, um, but... I don't know. I wasn't, like, oversold by it to where I was like, oh my god, I gotta see this movie. So, I don't know. But check out the trailer for yourself and see what you think. Um, Nicolas Cage is gonna star in a new political movie called The Runner. Um, AMC has ordered Chris Hardwick's new all-star celebrity bowling (laughs) show. Uh, Like, this dude needs another reality show, but they're gonna do all-star celebrity bowling. Uh, In some you-probably-don't-care news, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are scheduled to get married on May 24th in Florence, Italy. Um, American Idol finale is this week, so it's down to the final two singers. Go go Caleb. Um, Big rumor mill going on right now is that Universal Pictures may be releasing a Namor, the Submariner movie, in 2016. Um... Namor is the only comic book licensed title that Universal Pictures has. You know, uh, Marvel, owned by Disney, has the Avengers and everybody else that we all know and love. Sony has Spider Man. Fox has Fantastic Four and X Men. Um, Universal only has the rights to Namor. A lot of people didn't know that, but they've just been sitting on it. They don't know what to do with it because they don't own the rights to really much else other than Namor. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to do a movie when you can't fit in any other characters. But I think they're finally opening their eyes and saying, man, we got this property. We might as well get into the comic book game. So this is, this is once again, just a rumor. But this was a very big rumor that was going around last week um, that Universal is prepping this. So we may get a Namor movie. For those of you don't, that don't know, Namor is basically Marvel's version of Aquaman. So DC has Aquaman. Marvel has Namor. So, there you go. Um, Yeah, so you may see a movie in 2016. It was pretty cool. Also, on May 16th, it finally became official. Star Wars Episode Seven officially started filming. Yes, it's happening. It's no more a rumor. The the camera has started rolling. The uh, slate has been clicked. And Star Wars Episode Seven is now currently shooting. Um, Zach Galifianakis and Paul Rudd are teaming up, and they're going to star in a new comedy um, that that has no name yet, but it's going to be directed by the guy that did The Artist. Uh, We have an article up that you can click. I'm not going to get into it because it does have some kind of spoilery stuff. Uh, The article is called Spoilery Tidbits on Avengers 2, uh, Ultron, Costumes, Weapons, and More. Uh, It's a nice little article about kind of the direction of Avengers 2. So you can check that out. Uh, we posted the brand new poster for Guardians of the Galaxy. I love this poster. It looks so sweet. And speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, tomorrow, Monday, May 19th, the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy trailer is going to be released. Uh, the second official trailer. Uh, I am so stoked for this. I think we're finally going to hear Rocket Raccoon speak. We might hear Groot. Um, We're going to get some good stuff out of this new trailer tomorrow. So look for that tomorrow up on the page. Okay? And Zach Galifianakis is on a roll. This is the third movie now I've talked about Zach being a part of. Kristen Wiig, Zach Galifianakis, and Owen Wilson uh, are signed up to do a new heist comedy. So... 
there you go, man. I, I can't believe I just mentioned three movies that Zach Galifianakis is doing. <laughs> the dude is on fire this week. Uh, if we had a star of the week, it would be Zach Galifianakis. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's TV show The Strain, which is going to premiere on FX, uh, has finally gotten its release date. It will debut on FX on July 13th. There you go. Uh, in some sad news, if you watch The Voice, Shakira is not coming back. Mm, I love my Shakira. Um, you know, Shakira, uh, she's, this is her second season that she's on right now. And she typically rotates seasons. So, like, it was, like, her and then Christina and then her and then Christina. Well, we know that Christina has been replaced by Gwen Stefani for the next season. Um, but then Shakira came out and she said, you know what? Life is just too busy right now. I got kids. I'm doing a tour. I got albums I want to make. And... You know, she she says she just can't commit to it right now. So she she's not saying never, but she's saying that it, there's there's no timetable set for her anymore to come back to the voice. So hopefully one day we'll get my mamacita back. <laughs> um, to let you know, like I said, next week's big movie is X Men: Days of Future Past. It's been screened by some reviewers and it already has a rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It is ninety percent fresh. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So far, pretty much all the word on this film is amazing. And this just kind of goes with that flow. So 90% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes for X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, in another rumor mill, Disney is planning on re-releasing the original Star Wars trilogy on Blu-ray. Now there is a Blu-ray box set that's out right now, and they've also released the Blu-rays for the, all the Star Wars films, but they are the remastered special editions. And a lot of fans of Star Wars, and of course especially the original trilogy, kind of lose their mind and always talk shit and say, you know, we want the original trilogy, we want the original trilogy the way that they were. Well, now that Disney owns it, there's a lot of stuff they can do with it, and they know they can make a lot of money with it. So, once again, this is just a rumor at this stage, but it looks like Disney is prepping to do a re-release of the original Star Wars trilogy on Blu-ray. On last week's episode, we discussed that um, CBS, um, or ABC, ABC uh, has signed to do a Agent Carter show for Marvel, uh, based on Haley Atwell's character from the original Captain America film, uh, we found out that Agent Carter will run for eight episodes. It's going to be an eight-episode mini-season, um, probably showing over the winter time when Agents of Shield takes a break. They'll probably fill the the you know the break with Agent Carter. So that's pretty cool. We'll have something to look forward to while uh, Agents of Shield is on hiatus. And. Um, and the last, like, little bit of just tidbit news, which is kind of funny, because it's, I mean, it doesn't truly fall under entertainment, but a little bit it does, so I'm just going to mention it. Uh, it was also announced today, this was a rumor before, but it was announced today, AT&T has announced they have bought DirecTV for $48.5 billion. Yes, billion with a B. $48.5 billion AT&T buys DirecTV. So there you go. That's a great acquisition. <laughs> and uh, that, my friends, actually gets us caught up to speed on the news of the week. So let's run on over and check out our new releases and our box office to wrap this baby up. Nice and smooth. We just barely hit the half hour mark, baby. All right, on DVD and Blu-ray this week, on Tuesday, a handful of movies are hitting DVD and Blu-ray, so check it out. You've got The Monuments Men, Winner's Tale, Pompeii, Vampire Academy, Three Days to Kill, and About Last Night. Alright? In theaters on Friday is going to be X-Men Days of Future Past and the new Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore movie, Blended. Uh, I don't know why Adam Sandler would put out a movie against X-Men. Uh, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Um... I will definitely be seeing X-Men. I can't say I'll be seeing Blended this weekend. Um, I'm not even that stoked on Blended, and I'm a big Adam Sandler fan, and I'm even more of a fan of Adam Sandler with Drew Barrymore because I love The Wedding Singer. I love Fifty First Dates. I think Drew and Adam have an amazing chemistry together, and I'm hoping that that still stands in Blended. Um, but honestly, I don't even know anyone that wants to go see Blended. 
probably except for my, you know, nine-year-old stepdaughter. So she loves Adam Sandler. So I might end up seeing Blended just by taking her to the movies. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But we'll definitely be seeing X-Men, and I'll have that review on the next episode. Let's run down the box office, shall we? Number 10 is Mom's Night Out with $1.9 million. Number 9 is Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return with $1.95 million. Number 8 is Captain America, The Winter Soldier with $3.75 million. Number 7 is Rio 2 with $3.8 million. Number 6 is Heaven is for Real with $4.4 million. Number 5 is The Other Woman with $6.3 million. Number 4 is a debut. It's Million Dollar Arm uh, coming in at number 4 debut with $10.5 million. Number 3 is The Amazing Spider-Man 2 bringing in $16.8 million. Number 2 is Neighbors. Uh, Neighbors was the number 1 movie last week with $52 million. Uh, this week it drops to number 2 with $26 million. So still bringing in a whopping amount of money. It's made almost $100 million literally in two weeks. That is impressive for a rated R comedy. $26 million for Neighbors at number 2. And your number 1 film, I already hinted at this earlier, I told you about this earlier, smashing records, blazing through, is Godzilla. Godzilla number 1 with $93.2 million. Such a massive debut, man. Um, it was also announced today. Yep. Today. It was announced that Warner Brothers has come out and said that they are doing a Godzilla sequel. So there you go. That's my last tidbit of news to drop on you today. Because after a $93 million opening, you damn straight Warner Brothers is moving along on a Godzilla Part 2. Um, it is coming, it is official, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures have agreed that they're going to start work immediately on a sequel film, so no details yet as of cast, or if the same director is coming back, or anything like that, but they are quick to jump the gun and green light that sequel after you make that big of a weekend. Like I said, they were expecting $65 million. so when you make 93 and it's doing even better business overseas, the film only costs 160 to make. It's a profitable film, so congratulations to everybody involved. It was a big risk for a lot of people, especially after the disaster that the 1998 film was, and they did it right, and people want to see more, so congratulations. All right, that will do it, my friends. We are caught up. We are back on our normal schedule, and hopefully it'll be smooth sailing uh, from this point on. So let me go ahead and shout out the affiliates, reddragonsradio.com. Um, go ahead and bookmark that You can listen to us You can listen to This Week with the Geek You can listen to Inside the Ropes uh, Lots of stuff for you to listen to Over on RedDragonsRadio.com Follow on Twitter at RedDragonsRadio So you're always in the know of what's going on uh, And of course the Excess Radio Network Where we're also in syndication Follow on Twitter at Excess Radio um, please subscribe to us on iTunes. Um, we really need your help on iTunes. A lot of people listen to us through Apple, and um, but don't take the time to give a thumbs up, to rate us, you know, four stars, five stars, whatever the scale is, to subscribe and leave a comment, leave a quick review. It really, really helps us out. So if you if you work with us through iTunes, please hook it up. Um, of course, if you're looking to listen to us on the go, Stitcher is the app to get. Get Stitcher Radio on iOS, on Android, on Windows. Stitcher is the way to go. You can even listen to Stitcher through a regular computer. So if you want to listen that way, you could do that as well. Um, of course, our official webpage is amiontheair.com. So you should bookmark that because that's where you listen to the show. That's where you see the movie reviews. You see the box office, all the release dates for the week's trailers, um, affiliates, the whole nine. Am I on the air? Dot com. Of course, like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash am I on the air to take you directly to that. Please give us a like. Tell all your friends. If you know anybody that is really into entertainment, news and reviews and trailers and that whole nine, you should be going to Am I on the Air on Facebook. And if you really want to be in the know of all the news, you should be following us on Twitter. Um, you know, there's different news on both areas there. I want to kind of reiterate that. Um, it's a little bit different between Facebook and Twitter. A lot of people sync them together. So what's on Facebook is on Twitter, and what's on Twitter is on Facebook. It's not that way. 
um, with with Am I on the Air. We try to do different things to get people involved on different social media. So, you know, what's on Facebook is not what's all that's on Twitter, and what's on Twitter is not all that's on Facebook. You know, Facebook allows us to post a lot of videos, allows us to do fo- a lot of photos, because we can do albums and stuff like that. Uh, on Twitter... Um, we blast a lot of news, like when DVDs come out and stuff like that, where I don't, we don't put stuff like Facebook page. Um, cause we also don't want to spam people's face, you know, Facebook streams. So on Facebook, I really try to just post, um, big articles that people are going to be interested in. And then on the Twitter page, because the Twitter stream is more open, uh, all the news gets blasted on Twitter. So if you really want to be in the know, uh, and I also like to tell people this too, because some people tell me, man, I would love to see what you post on Twitter, but I'm not on Twitter myself. You don't have to be on Twitter. If you just go to twitter.com slash forward slash am I on the air, you will see our page. And you can see all the news and everything. So you can just bookmark that, and you can just refresh every day. And, and just look and be like, oh, what's the news today? Boom, refresh the Twitter stream and check it out. If you are on Twitter, though, I suggest you follow us, because that would be a really nice thing to do. So, am I, at am I on the air on Twitter, give us a follow. Follow me on Twitter, because you should support the host, because I do all the work. So my name is DX Don Mega on Twitter. DX Don Mega on Twitter. You can find links to all the social stuff right on amiontheair.com, and that'll that'll help you out in case you forget anything or need links to iTunes or anything else. It's all right there. Amiontheair.com should be pretty simple to remember. And with that being said, that's going to do it for us tonight. So once again. Season 8, Episode 15, Let Them Fight. If you're curious of where that title comes from, it's a line in the movie that Ken Watanabe says when the creatures are, you know, basically going to destroy themselves and the military wants to step in. He says, let them fight. And it's a pretty cool line. So that's our show title tonight. So thank you, everybody, for listening to this nice little, uh, you know, shortened up version i knew it wasn't going to be as long because we just did a show on tuesday so um nice little 40 minute edition and uh we're done so thanks for listening we will catch you on the next episode of am i on the air peace Don Mega, Don Mega, Don Mega.